Hi, folks. It's your old buddy, Chris, and I wanted to thank you for coming back for the last part of our series of our QSR, Quick Service Restaurant Boot Camp. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about brand and concept. Now, the dictionary defines brand as a style, a type, a grade, or make of a product as indicated by some kind of stamp or trademark label. Now, a brand is oftentimes confused as a market segment. Now, uh, there could be nothing further than the truth that there's two are totally different. The uh, inexperienced uh, fast food executive may consider their brand, quote unquote, brand as a fast food hamburger, as an example. When in all actuality, the brand is, quote unquote, a flame broiled hamburger. Do you see the differences there? Now, I'm sure that you could probably guess as to which company I'm talking about. Of course, I'm talking about uh, Burger King, but sure, uh, you understand it's Burger King, you're familiar, Flame Bro Burger, but that seems to be the only uh, right thing that uh, Burger King is doing is is talking about its branding. Uh their their new idea concept of a hot dog is a total disaster. They're a hamburger joint. Their brand is hamburgers. Their brand is flame broiled hamburgers. But what are they promoting? A hot dog. Now, if you're going to be promoting a product, there's a simple golden rule that you need to go by. So let's go ahead and talk about the branding uh, golden rule that you you need to say now. Uh, when you market your brand, uh, you have to really, really work hard to it. If you sell flame broiled hamburgers, then market flame broiled hamburgers. But here's another question, because there's been a lot of uh, false so-called brand marketing in the industry. If I were a company that sells sandwiches, and these sandwiches are made with home-baked bread and fresh vegetables. Why in heaven's name would I sell the fresh vegetables? That's ridiculous, selling the fresh vegetables. You sell the home-baked bread. Now, all of this is because of a simple rule that I invented years ago. It's a simple rule. It's called the broken glass rule. Now every time that you start setting up a menu or thinking about building your menu, you have to look at the broken glass rule. And the broken glass rule simply states here, and you want to use it for all your menus. Would your customer crawl over broken glass to get your food? The items that you find that are broken glass items are winners. Nothing in your restaurant, nothing in your brand is ever just good enough. It has to be the best. Now, let's take, I'm going to give you an example, an actual example of a company, uh, a restaurant that recently opened up and closed here in our town. Our town years ago was a booming steel town, very big huge population. Over the past several decades, our population has dwindled down by over 80%. So there's only a few uh, of those people from the heyday that are still here. So this place decided that they were going to open up a restaurant in the downtown part of the city, and it would have all this memorabilia from the heyday of this town. Now, this particular steel town that we work in is has a huge population of uh, Polish, Czechoslovakian, Yugoslavian folks. A lot of Central European folks live in this town. So you have those wonderful foods. You have the kabasis, the 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 schnitzels. You have the uh, you have the halushki, the halupki, uh, the pierogies. Uh, all those great uh, Central European foods here, right? So if you're going to build a uh, a cafe or a restaurant uh, in regards to the town when the town was booming that brings back the memories of all of these places 
you figure that this restaurant would want to feature some classic, classic Central European fare on their menu. They didn't. You see, when you went there, if you ordered a fish sandwich on Friday, which in this very heavily Catholic area, most of the churches had fish fries, you would get Mrs. Paul's fish sticks on a hot dog bun. When you ordered pierogies, you weren't going to get homemade pierogi, which are available from 30 or 40 different Catholic churches and, and, uh, and Orthodox churches here in our town. You're not going to get pierogi from them. You're going to get uh, Mrs. T's store-bought frozen pierogies. Okay, You couldn't get halupki or halushki to save your life. You couldn't even get kabasi. Okay, uh, This place... Uh, sold from their local food vendor, be it Cisco or Golden Foods, whoever they've gone to, U.S. Foods. It didn't matter. They did not follow through. They spent thousands and thousands of dollars remodeling the inside of this restaurant with memorabilia from the town. But the menu, the menu had nothing to do, nothing whatsoever to do with the town. It was a terrible failure for this business because they didn't quite understand to stay with their brand. Now, moving on with our brand and our concept, let's talk a little bit about concept. Now, concept is a general notion or a general idea. And here is a stumbling block that a lot of folks run into. And I'm going to go ahead and give you an example where your concept gets in the way. Now, my friend Dave uh, had a business at a local shopping mall where he sold authentic Mexican food. Now, when he first opened up, he couldn't keep the beef or the chicken enchiladas in stock. I mean, customers waited up to 20 minutes per order. Now, over a period of time, these lines started to dwindle. So Dave had determined that it was the time, the waiting time, that actually killed him. So he would make hundreds of beef and chicken enchiladas, freeze them, and then reheat them on the grill. That would cut their prep time down in half. Guess what? The lines still dwindled, and eventually uh, Dave had to close. He closed his he closed his restaurant. Okay, so it has to make you wonder. Well, you know what was Dave's problem? He had changed it. It wasn't the the time that killed him. The customers waited for his enchiladas. That was just one thing. <clears throat> What had killed him is that Dave had over 40 menu items, but his customers only wanted enchiladas. But he still offered these 40 products. See, so instead of promoting the best enchiladas in town, he continued to promote his other menu items. He spent more time perfecting the other menu items and skimping, get this skimping on what he was doing that made everybody buy the enchiladas in the first place. Dave was doomed to fail because he didn't give the customers what they wanted or the quality of the product that they expected. They expected to come to Dave's Mexican food stand food concession stand for authentic Mexican enchiladas and they got something that wasn't even close to what they had expected or even worse, what he had just previously offered a short time ago. When you look at things and you look at your brand, which is your style, your type, your grade, your concept, your, your, uh, your indicator by its stamp or trademark seal, and your concept, the general notion of what you are, you have to know what you're doing. And you have to know what you're doing is right. Well, how do you know, as a small business owner, how do you know that before you start your quick serve restaurant, be it whatever, that you're doing things right? How do you find this out? Well, it could cost you millions and millions of dollars to study these concepts, to look up these concepts, or there's a really easy way we can do that, and I'm going to help you with that right now. What you want to do is you want to get two or three trusted friends that you're thinking about opening up this Q, uh, this Quick Star uh, restaurant, this Quick Serve restaurant with, 
or your business partner, what have you, and I have some lovely homework for you. You want to get a brand new fresh notebook, go to Dollar General. They're like a buck a piece. Buy a brand new spiral binder. Get yourself a couple pens, one for each of you. And what you need to do is you need to head off to your closest QSR restaurant in your area. Pizza Hut, Domino's, Burger King, KFC, McDonald's, Subway. There has to be at least two or three of these in your town. You want to go to at least three to four of these if you can. And here's simply what you need to do. You need to observe what they are doing right and what they are doing wrong. Now you want to make special notes of all the things that they do the same from they may all have napkins with their name printed on it they all may serve drinks in cups with their names printed on it okay that's something they do right uh you also want to talk about the things that they do wrong and discuss with each other why you think this works and why you think this doesn't work what's right or what's wrong and i mean take notes of everything the interior of the restaurant do all of them use self-serve soda pop fountains so that you don't have to continue to buy drinks or load drinks or coffee or what have you? See what they're doing. See what they're doing right. See what they're doing wrong. And you'll see that there's actually a lot of things that they do that you can include in your own business. So as we recap everything, as we wrap everything up, let's just take a mind. Uh, a brand is your style, type, grade. A uh, make of product is indicated by a stamp or trademark label. A concept is a general idea or notion. The three things you need to work on is, number one, you want to build a broken glass menu to drive your brand. Once you put out a certain type or quality of food out there, your customers will find you. You will drive customers to your site. Secondly, you want to do the right things. Then these things that you do have to support your concept. If Dave was a Mexican restaurant and Dave had supported his Mexican restaurant correctly, he would still be in business today, but he wasn't. And number three, because he wasn't able to do number three, focusing on what your customers want, not necessarily on what it is you want. Okay, now there's one thing else that we need to just touch on real briefly, and it's about the concept. When you sit down to decide what your concept is, your concept and your brand should not be longer than five words. That's it. If you can't sum up what you sell and how you sell it in five words each and under 10 words, then you really need to sit down and think about your concept and maybe you're doing just too much. One of our sponsors, Rob's Rib Shots, has an incredible way of describing their brand and their concept that basically tells you what it is. Rob's Rib Shots not only uh, owns and operates uh, barbecue places, but they also offer a licensing agreement for their uh, barbecue process. Uh, Rob's Rib Shots brand is, is very simple. It is, for their license, the, the brand is become a barbecue joint overnight. That's their brand. That's what they're selling. Rob's Rib Shots is selling a licensing agreement where you can become a barbecue joint overnight. Five words, and one of those words is A. <laughs> so when you go to Rob's Rib Shots, you can become a barbecue joint overnight. The concept is even better and even less words. Grab and go barbecue. Grab and go barbecue. Grab and go barbecue. Very, very simple, succinct, and to the point. Somebody says, What are what are you? He says, I'm a I own a Rob's Rib Shots. I run a Rob's Rib Shots restaurant. What's that? Grab and go barbecue. Oh, grab and go barbecue. See, concept the brand doesn't say anything else, doesn't talk about the products it sells or the menu. It gives a general idea of what it is. See, that's the way to correctly get yourself a good brand and a good concept. And it's really, really easy 